Uh, the gentleman from Kentucky, Mr. Barr, is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Chairman Powell, uh, some in the press this morning and, and some of my colleagues have seemed to uh, try to uh, uh, make the argument that, that you and the Treasury Secretary are in disagreement about the exchange stabilization fund. I don't, I don't detect much of a disagreement. What I, what I hear the Secretary say is that, uh, that his decision to not extend the $430 billion left in the exchange stabilization fund is, is rooted in his interpretation of the statute of the CARES Act. And I, I, what I heard you say is that uh, that you believe that the secretary under the law has, a, has the authoritative <clears throat> interpretation of that, and you accept that. Um, now, obviously, you stated yesterday that <clears throat> you think it's <clears throat> perhaps premature to be pulling back from emergency lending programs, but uh, I hear uh, the Treasury Secretary say that it's within uh, Congress's ability to, to authorize that. So I don't see a disagreement here. But given the, the modest take-up in some of the emergency lending programs, particularly Main Street, uh, wouldn't it be wise for Congress to repurpose at least some of that $430 billion towards uh, what admittedly has been an effective program, the, the Paycheck Protection Program? I hope you won't mind if I use uh, just a couple seconds to clarify the, the sure. what's going on. So. As I said earlier, the Secretary has sole authority over CARES Act funds. He reads the statute and reads it to say that there's no, uh, no support for lending after December 31. We accept that. We don't have a role in reading it. And uh, so that's one thing. Uh, the, the, our thinking is, is not about the CARES Act money. It is more about support for the economy. Sure. We were concerned that the public might misinterpret this as the Fed stepping back and thinking that our work is done, and that, that's very much not the case. So we needed to send a signal to the public that, to that effect. And sure. it, as the Secretary pointed out in his letter, as we pointed out in our letter, there is exchange stabilization fund money that's available to, right. su to support the reestablishment of these facilities or other facilities if they are needed and, 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 you know, they meet the legal requirements and that kind of thing. Let me just, just ask this, though. Wouldn't it be wise for Congress at this point, before the end of the year, to repurpose some of those <clears throat> CARES Act funds uh, towards the Paycheck Protection Program, given the concerns of the small businesses that you referenced? I would just say that I, I you know, what I'm hearing from across, across the aisle and on both sides of the hill is the desire to do something to, to fund these, these causes that the Secretary just talked about and, and others. And I think, I think that would certainly be a help for the economy. As to where that money comes from, that's really up to you. Well, one area where there's, I think, significant bipartisan support is for streamlining the forgiveness process. Um, a recent survey uh, in Kentucky found that 27 percent of community banks in Kentucky would not participate in a new round of PPP without streamlined forgiveness and clear rules of the road. Many of the businesses in, in my district uh, who have applied for forgiveness tell me that the process from the SBA is slow and cumbersome. It's a big pro problem if lenders will not participate in a second round because of uh, inadequate streamlining of the forgiveness rules. Um, Secretary Mnuchin, you previously indicated your support for legislation to streamline PPP forgiveness. Is this still the case? And what more can we do to ensure participation by community lenders in a new round of PPP? I do support that. And we've created three different <clears throat> forms for forgiveness uh, using what authorities we have and uh, making it as simple as possible for loans that are less than 50000 But I know there's bipartisan support. pass a bill, I believe it's all loans, 150000 or less, and, and we fully support that subject to audit. Thank you. Uh, Chairman Powell, uh, the statutory language in the CARES Act temporarily suspends accounting rules related to troubled debt restructurings, uh, and that expires on December 31st. It's important that Congress extend this important tool uh, to allow uh, lenders to continue to work with their customers. What authorities do you have at the Fed to extend uh, TDR relief administratively versus what Congress must do to ensure lenders can continue to accommodate borrowers. So we actually don't have authority to extend TDR regards an accounting rule. Um, 
we we have a lot of authority though, and we will use it to make sure that that uh, banks continue to work with their with their borrowers and encourage them to do so. I should say. Um, there's some uncertainty among the auditing community about whether life insurers would qual qualify for TDR relief under CARES. Uh, this is a problem because insurers make up over 13 percent of the commercial real estate lending market, uh, a sector that's deeply impacted by the pandemic. Uh, Chair Powell, do you agree that life insurers, given their participation in the commercial real estate lending market, should qualify for TDR relief? I, I'd have to go check on that one. I'll come back to you. Thanks. Okay. We think that's... That's an important thing to, to look into. Uh, my time has expired. I yield back.